channel by Mwoo. I'm Mwoo aka Marianne and today we have episode 9 of the knitting podcast that we host here. Honestly it's been a really busy couple weeks for me both in my personal life and in my knitting life. Um, now that Christmas is less than a month away I am starting to feel the pressure. Despite all of that got quite a bit of knitting done so I'm excited to share all of those updates with you. But before we jump into all of that, I wanted to give a little bit of an update regarding the seal slipover that I finished in my last podcast episode. If you guys haven't seen that episode yet, then you might not know, I finished the petite knit seal slipover that had like pearl bump detailing along the edge. It was like in kind of like chevron-y patterns as well as just like moss stitch I want to say is probably the closest thing that I would describe it. I was in the process of blocking it in the last episode so I didn't have it to show you guys. And there's actually been a bit of a turn of events. I no longer have that piece. Funnily enough, when uh, that slipover was approaching its kind of drying phase, my parents were coming over to visit and my dad was saying that he was feeling a little cold and wanted to know if there was like a vest or a sweater of some sort that he could wear. I think when he asked, he was thinking of borrowing like Ryan's, but I was like, you know what, I just finished this slipover it's really big on me i can insert a photo or a video of me wearing it and so i was like maybe it would fit him surprisingly enough it fit him quite well the only thing was that it was like a little short but he said he liked the length of it because it like covered his stomach perfectly and so i loaned it to him that day when it was chilly and i no longer have it he took it home with him which is totally fine i really liked the seal slipover but there was something about the size of it I don't know like it wasn't exactly what I was envisioning and now I just have an excuse to knit myself another sweater vest at some point but I'm glad that he's getting a lot of wear out of it he wore it when I saw him yesterday and so as long as it's getting used and in a happy place then that's all that's good with me so yeah that's that little update there I will say that the Sandness Garn Perfect that I used for that one bloomed so beautifully. It relaxed really, really nicely and it lost kind of that acrylic texture that I was talking about previously. So if you guys are on the fence about using that, I would still recommend it because it's a beautiful yarn and relatively affordable, all things considering. Moving on to finished objects, there's a very obvious one and that is the one that I'm wearing today. So this is the step-by-step -step sweater by Florence Miller, AKA Handmade by Florence on YouTube and Instagram and it's this glorious, thick, rustic, relatively straightforward pattern that she released not that long ago that was designed for beginners. It's a free pattern if I haven't already mentioned and I heavily based this version that I made on the Katie Does Knits coffee stripe sweater and she used the same yarn and did kind of like this alternating brown stripe that I saw a while back and knew I needed to make a version for myself. The yarn that I used for this is the Lion Brands Fisherman Wool and the colors are oatmeal, this is nature's brown I believe, and then just normal brown. It's 100% wool and I think it is such a beautiful yarn. So first talking about the pattern, the pattern is like I said a beginner friendly pattern that is designed to make a raglan sweater and it's knit up on 5.5 millimeter needles with a relatively heavy yarn. I, I want to say that it's like worsted maybe? Air, between air and or worsted and so it knits up fairly quickly. In terms of my thoughts on the yarn, a lot of people have been asking me what I've thought about it. Despite me really enjoying it, I do want to caveat that it's probably not a yarn for everyone and it's probably not a yarn for every project. While it's a very affordable and easily accessible yarn because you can pick it up at Joann's in the States and I want to say that a skein costs anywhere between like maybe 10 to $15 depending on if you can get it on sale. It is a really scratchy yarn. I personally am not too sensitive to like scratchiness or the itch factor that people call it, but I will say I have to wear like a mock neck or a turtleneck underneath this or else it does irritate my skin a little bit. Editing Marianne here. I just wanted to jump in and say that I wore it again today and it wasn't a problem for me. Like I'm not wearing anything underneath. The last time I wore it next to skin was pre-block, so maybe post-blocking has helped the yarn relax a little bit and so therefore it's not as itchy, I'm not sure. That being said, it's still a scratchy yarn, so if you have any remote sensitivity, 
this probably will be a little irritating for you. Just wanted to add a little bit more info for you. <laughs> it's really, really warm. It's 100% wool. And I would say that it probably reminds me between the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and Pure Gint. But Pure Gint, I would say, is probably less scratchy than this one. I suspect that this will be a really great felting yarn if you want to do like felted slippers or mittens or some sort. But I wouldn't say that it's like comparable to something like merino cashmere because it's not. It's not for that. It's for like a rustic styled sweater projects, things like that. How I envisioned this one, because I knew it was going to be kind of more on that rustic end, was kind of like an at-home cozy sweater. Like I, if I see it as a cottage sweater, something by the water, like in the woods for camping. Like it's got that vibe that it would hold up really well to the test of time and I am really happy with it and would definitely use it again but you would have to consider who you're using it for and what you want to do it before just diving straight in. If you can definitely go to like a Joann's or something and feel it out. You could probably get a gauge in terms of how much it will irritate your skin if you go and touch it because it is a lot more like rough feeling but I really enjoyed working with it and I'm really happy with how this sweater turned out. Some fun facts about this sweater, I timed the process in terms of how long it took me of like active knitting time. I was gonna film a vlog with that, but I, I kind of got derailed, especially when I started working on the sleeves, I just totally forgot about filming. But overall, this sweater took me 21 hours, which like when you say it loud, sounds like a lot of time, which it is, but for like a hand knit project that's also like not that much if you think about it and I will provide some contrast to that later on in the podcast when I talk about another project that I'm timing. But overall it was like a fairly straightforward knit. Whether or not it takes you less or more time, this my 21 hours is not to pressure you. It was just me trying to get a gauge in terms of like how long a stock and net, heavyweight, hot, like thick needle project would take. And I feel like this is like the baseline. This is as fast as it will ever be. Anything on smaller needles or thinner yarn or more complicated would definitely increase that time. I think what, what puts this into perspective is how much hand knit projects like would cost if you were to sell them. And while I'm not in the market of selling any of my garments or want to look into that, just like putting it into perspective. I don't think I'm a slow knitter. I'm definitely not the fastest in the world, but like 21 hours I think is respectable. If you consider that minimum wage here where I live is maybe like 15, $15.50, something around there, like that's about 300 and something dollars for just like the labor fee of like minimum wage. I think the yarn that I chose for this sweater was also on the more affordable side given that it was 100% wool. So let's say when I bought it, it was like 13 USD, maybe 15 Canadian for, took me, four skeins, a little less than four skeins, and you want to make a little bit of a profit other than just breaking even with the amount of time that you put into it, like, I think this would be like a $500 sweater. And like pricing a sweater like that makes a lot of sense, even though that the final price tag sounds like a lot. So I just, I don't know, it just kind of crazy to me when you see like hand knit or handmade things and they're priced so lowly because People put a lot of time and energy into it and I don't think we should be taking those for granted. Those are just my thoughts about that. Like I said, not planning on selling any of my stuff. Um, I will continue to make them even if they take a really long time because I enjoy the process and I think that's what's important. If you guys are curious about the exact times of how long everything took, like I kind of segmented it into like how long the collar took, how long the short row shaping took, how long the body and the sleeve one, sleeve two, that kind of thing. All the details can be found on the Ravelry page for this project. All right, so the next slew of finished objects are all Christmas gift knits. I don't actually have most of them anymore, four of which I have now shipped out because I needed to mail them across the country. But the first set were a set of socks. I specifically called these the family Christmas socks and I made these for my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, as well as my nephew. And I kind of did kind of a corresponding theme for them. They were all green. I made my brother-in-law like a dark green, my sister-in-law like a lighter green and like a little stripey version for my nephew, kind of like a combination of the two and I thought it was so adorable. And these were based off the Thick Miss socks by Summer Lee. 
I talked about this pattern in my gift knits video that I posted last two weeks ago and I am obsessed with that pattern. They're all DK weight socks so they all knit up really really nicely and I used the Barocco Vintage DK which is such a great yarn for gift knits. Honestly it's a really nice feeling yarn. It's got a combination of like wool and nylon so it's going to be really really easily maintainable by the people that you're gift knitting it to and it comes in a slew of colors like it's so great i specifically did the vanilla ones so this pattern comes with four it comes with like a vanilla sock a scrappy vanilla sock which is very similar but i think she gives it you more detail in terms of like how to do like the scrappy yarn transitions there's a cable version as well as a reverse stock in it I've only done the vanilla sock ones, but I did take a skim over the other patterns and they all still seem very straightforward to understand. If any of you guys know Summer Lee, all of her sock patterns are great. She has a whole bunch, which by the time this video goes up, the sale will be over, but she had a 30% off Black Friday discount for them. And I didn't stock up because I bought a whole bunch a while back, but I would highly recommend looking into her sock patterns if you guys are interested in starting any of her socks. I can't say enough good things about that pattern as well as those yarn, and all in all, all of the socks were fairly quick to knit up. I would want to say that the baby ones were the hardest only because I was kind of like alternating between colors to do the striping, and striping on small socks is not what I think is the most fun. Um, there's a lot of like yarn management and because the circumference is so small, you're like kind of fiddly. Oh, I forgot to mention all of the like cuffs, the toe and the heels were all done in knit picks stroll in the color bear. So it's technically a sport weight yarn. I figured it would give some nice contrast to like the green color and I think they turned out really well. Highly recommend all of the yarns that I used for this. I am considering casting on some cable knit socks but I'm working on some other cable projects that I don't know if I should cast on another one just yet. <laughs> the next gift knit was also for my nephew so it also got shipped out but I was honestly like a horrible Instagram YouTube documenter. I started this project back in July and it was originally supposed to be for my nephew's birthday gift, like when he was born, I was hoping to give this sweater to them. But by the time I had cast it on, I was like, this is not gonna be finished in time. So you know what, I'm just gonna hold it and hand it over to them when Christmas rolls around. Because it took a couple months hiatus and I was like, okay, now that Christmas is like a month or so away, I gotta get my butt working on this. And I finally finished it. And during that whole process, I did not take one single process photo. I usually try to take like a final photo to post on Ravelry as well as Instagram, but by the time I had blocked it, I was just so eager to pack it up and send it out that like it was in the box and ready to go and I was like, oh my god, I forgot to take a photo. So I don't have a photo of that and I can't show you it here or anywhere, but it was the Ingrid baby sweater by Petite Knit and I used the Hayfield Bonus Erin Tweed Yarn in Glencoe. Let me go get it. Okay, if you guys have been watching for a while, I showed this skein a while ago so this might be a little familiar, but it was this yarn and it's kind of this really pretty off-white with like brown and black flecks and I thought it would make like a really really nice just plain but not just like beige, you know, sweater. And this skein, believe it or not, knit up a whole baby sweater and they're still, it's still bigger than my head. Like how insane is this? It was really affordable. I think I got it on sale though, but it was like maybe $20 for this giant ball. And I could probably honestly get another two sweaters, like baby sweaters out of it. This one is, I wanna say like a wool acrylic nylon blend. And I intentionally chose that for kind of like the maintenance factor. I wanted it to be a sweater that they could kind of like throw in the wash, not have to worry about it because I think the last thing you want to think about when you have a baby is having to wash wool sweaters or wool just like things. So I would highly recommend this yarn for the right purpose. I did find that it was a little bit on the heavier side for the Ingwood sweater and therefore my gauge was off by a little bit. The sweater, despite me kind of like trying to adjust for the thicker yarn and using like a thinner needle and stuff like that, turned out way bigger than I wanted it to. So he's probably gonna be wearing that until next <laughs> Christmas, which 
I feel like bigger is better than smaller, but I was hoping to get like a good size because baby clothing is so cute and it looks like like a toddler sweater. <laughs> I wish I could show you. I'm so sorry that I didn't take a photo. Overall, I don't know how I feel about the pattern. It knit up a really nice garment. Like the final product was really nice. I understand why people really like the Ingrid sweater, both like the adult version as well as the junior and the baby version, but I don't know what about, maybe it was the way it was written or just like my mental state with it because I had started this project so long ago and was trying to work on it in like a time crunch. I didn't love it and I don't know if I would make that sweater again. I feel bad that I'm not able to say specifically what about it I didn't like, but I don't know, something about the knitting experience and the pattern just, it wasn't as smooth sailing as I would have liked it to be if I was like knitting up just like a pattern for the sake of it, if that makes sense. I know a lot of people still swear by Petit Knit and it's clearly doing something right because she's a really big popular designer, but yeah, something about this specific pattern didn't rub me the right way. And I don't have anything against Petit Knit particularly because I did the Friday tee, I've done like her Sunday socks, I've done her um, Sophie scarf and all of those patterns weren't bad. I will say I don't think she's the cleanest writer, but I don't know, something about the specific Ingrid Jr. or Ingrid Baby didn't, didn't hit the spot, but that's okay. The last finished object is one that I feel like had been on the podcast before, but it probably hasn't been around recently, and that is the Muscle Burrow from my father. Um, I think he watches my podcast, so this is not going to be a surprise anymore, but this is your Christmas present, Dad, for Christmas. <laughs> before he took my seal slip over, I was like, oh, I feel like I should knit him something, and I felt like a hat would be like a good middle ground, because he typically likes wearing hats quite a bit, and I got this. Lang's Yarn J Wall Superwash in this like really pretty blue, white, marled texture that I thought would be really great for him. So I knit up the Muscle Burrow pattern by Yolinda Teague and I absolutely adore that pattern. I've raved about it a ton so I won't go on and on about that. But this yarn was really nice to work with. I'm really happy that I knit it up. I had casted it on, I want to also say back in the summertime, because I was trying to get a head start on my Christmas knits, and that didn't really pan out. But anyways, it went on hold because I had to start working on Ryan's Muscle Burrow, the remake of the alpaca one. And now that Christmas was again around the corner, I was like, I probably should work on this. So I just picked it up again. I was looking for something that was just like plain struck in it in the round, hit the spot, and finished it within about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I tacked it down so I can't like undo it the way that I usually do. But I found it really funny because as I was working on this one, I could tell that because the like hat gets heavier as you make it, my tension was like everywhere by the end. So I strategically put the decreasing crown on the inside because it is a lot less clean than the increasing. But loved how it turned out. I think that it blocked really nicely. I did decide to steam block this one as well as this sweater instead of wet blocking. I think it was fine for this. I think that the step-by-step -step would have benefited a little bit better from a wet block, but I was too lazy to wait for it to dry completely and so I thought the steam blocking was better than not blocking. But yeah, would still really recommend this pattern. I recommended it to my sister and now she's making one and I don't have plans now to cast on anymore. I said that last time and then I cast it on another one. But really now I don't have plans to cast on anymore unless someone else wants a hat because I don't need any more hats and I'm kind of muscle burled out, at least for the rest of this year. We'll see what happens in the new year. Moving into the work in progress section, I have an update, a very small update on my Alder sweater by the Crea Bea or AKA, I think her name is Rebecca Chow. And I haven't made too much progress on it, but I'm really enjoying this one. This is still my like comfort knit. And I think I've progressed a little bit more on the yoke than you guys saw last time, but just wanted to do a little bit of an update for this one. This is a raglan color worked sweater that she published, I wanna say back in October sometime. And it has this really, really fun colored texture on it that kind of looks like stars. I think it's so much fun. I've not been prioritizing this because of all of the Christmas knits and because it is color work and it's on a four row 
repeat. It is a little bit more slow moving than just like a one color sweater or stockinette or whatnot. So I've been kind of having this on the back burner, hence why I haven't been making as much progress. I anticipate it will continue to stay that way, but I am really excited for once it's finished. It's going to be such a lovely sweater because the color working is going to make it like really like squishy if that makes sense. This specific sweater is being made in the West Yorkshire's Spinner's Fleece Blue Faced GK. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm using the color Berry and the natural color that they have and I'm really really happy with how they look together. I think it's a really fun contrast. It's the first time I'm using like a dark reddish color in a very long time and I'm really excited for how that turns out. I wish I could get it done for Christmas because I think it would be a really fun Christmas sweater but I suspect this one won't be on the needles for quite some time. I mentioned this in the last podcast when I talked about it where I'm kind of in between sizes. My specific bust size was the largest number on the smallest size but I wanted more than just like the minimum amount of ease. So I ended up scaling up on the needles. Is that what I did? I don't remember. No, I scaled down on the needles. I went to 3.5 and I'm knitting the larger size, size two. And my goal is to hopefully get maybe six to eight centimeters of positive ease. We will see if I will succeed with that, but I haven't actually tried it on. So we'll try it on together. I think it's so cute. Oh, I really like that. I don't think this is doing it justice because I think it would look better with the collar and probably like split for sleeves, but this is what I have right now. So this is what we're trying. Yeah, really all things considering as much I haven't been making progress, I am really enjoying it. One last thing I will say about it is that it is, like I mentioned, a four row repeat. And there is one specific row of the repeat that she has you increasing to accommodate for like the patterning of the colors. And I'm having a hard time like, ooh, no, 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 please hold. Wait, we, we fixed it. But um, I'm so scared of dropping it because I don't know if I have it in me to fix color work right now. Anyways, like I was saying, there's a specific row in the repeating pattern that she has you increasing and you do decrease in the next one to maintain like the actual number. But because you're going like way more to smaller amounts of stitches, it's kind of hard to work with the needles um, because at some point like your needles feel like they're like busting at the seams because there's so many stitches on it. And then like once you get into the next round, it's fine. So yeah, that's been something I've been kind of struggling with because I like working like in the round versus doing magic loop, but maybe magic loop would have been better until I can finally split for sleeves. Cause I'm getting to the point where as I'm still doing the raglan increases, I'm accounting for a lot of stitches for both the body and the sleeves, but it's been working out okay. I'm sure that once I split for sleeves, like that problem will go away. Definitely casted it on being a little bit more ambitious than I thought I was with time. I still haven't even used up the first skein of like my wound yarn. And I have a whole bunch left that I still need to work through. Um, I probably overbought for that as I always do. Whoops. The next two work in progresses are new cast on. So you guys haven't seen these before. And the first one is it's gonna be a little hard to show because it's work flat right now, but it's the Robinson wrap top. No, Robinson wrap cardigan by Florence Miller. And it's a really beautiful like wrap style cardigan, like the name's pretty self-explanatory, that has kind of like a v-neck shaping here and like a really high amount of one by one ribbing and like a tie waist that I think is so adorable. The yarn that I'm using for this is the Katina Merino Sita in the color 71, which is this really pretty like sage green with some white in it. It kind of has a similar vibe as the yarn that I used for my dad's muscle burrow. And I surprisingly have really, really, really been enjoying this project. So if this yarn looks familiar, that's because I showed it a while back in my fall planning video. And my plan was it was to do a different cardigan by, I believe the designer was Clarissa and it was her Myosotis cardigan, I think. And I was, like 
dead set on doing that back when I was filming it. And I was organizing my patterns on the Ravelry page slash looking at them. And I realized that I bought this wrap cardigan pattern from Florence Miller like a while back. Honestly, maybe beginning of like my knitting journey. And instead of opting to buy the other cardigan, I was like, you know what? They use the same yarn. Both of the recommended yarns is the Knitting for Olive Merino held with the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. And I did the calculation that this DK weight Merino Sita was going to be the perfect substitute for that combo. So I was like, you know what? I'll just use the pattern that I already have instead of spending some more money to buy the new one. I still think I want to do that cardigan eventually but I've been trying to prioritize like patterns that I've purchased already with the yarn that I already have so instead of doing that I casted this one on. Why I'm so surprised at how much I've been enjoying it was because my first two big sweaters sweaters cardigans that I did were cardigans and cardigans are typically worked flat. I didn't have the best experience with those ones. Obviously working in the round in my opinion is a little bit more therapeutic, a little bit more mind numbing, it's a little bit more just like, don't have to think about it. And I was kind of dreading having to do like the knitting flat, knitting back and forth for this project. I wanted to cast on something that was a little bit more stockinetti because like you saw, I was working on a color work, working on a whole bunch of smaller like Christmas gift knits. And the new cast on that I will talk about after this one is a cable knit sweater. And so I just bit the bullet and cast it on. And it's been so nice. I think what ended up being good about it was because it's stockinette, it's just like one row of knit, one row of purl. Both of my other cardigans that I've done in the past was one was brioche, which like is not that straightforward. And then the other one was like faux cabling. So I did have to think about like making sure that I was counting every couple rows and making sure that I was doing the appropriate cables at the certain time. And so this one's been really meditative. I've been really enjoying it. It's worked up fairly quickly, all things considering. I've been only working on it for about a week and I think it looks so nice. I'm making size B and this is done on four millimeter needles. So just the quintessential DK. This yarn is a very interesting yarn because it's half, maybe not directly half, it's like 45% silk or something like that. And then the remaining is merino and it is such a lovely yarn. I'm really enjoying Katina's yarn. Like both this one that I did, which is the Merino Sita, worked really nicely. And then the one that I did for my summer souffle, which was their cotton yak, worked really beautifully too. I don't know if this is like translatable to like other fiber blends, but I'm really enjoying these like half kind of plant half animal fiber ones. And this one is no exception. It works really nicely. It's so nice to work with. I'm, I like, I don't know. I'm honestly really surprised about how much I've enjoyed this one and I will continue to be knitting on it as I move forward. All right, let's talk about the last work in progress. This one is one that I am so excited to have finally cast on and that is the Arctic Light Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. I know what I have here is not very impressive in terms of like, you can't really tell what it is. It's just a collar at this point but you guys don't know how thrilled I am to have finally casted this on. There were so many behind the scene hurdles in terms of getting to this specific point. And so I'm just like ecstatic that I finally made it. We are finally here and we are finally talking about it. Before I go into the whole story about what happened very quickly, this is a cable knit sweater that Veronica Lindbergh published. And it's on the more traditional style in terms of cable knit sweaters. I know that people really enjoyed the Moby sweater by Petite Knit, which is a really lovely sweater, but I think it has more of like a modern take to cable knits. Whereas I was specifically looking for more traditional vibe because I was really heavily inspired by a blue cerulean cable knit sweater that I had as a child. And it has a look to it, you know? It's not a modern day sweater. It has more of like a old, timey vibe because I mean the sweater is from like the 90s um, that I kind of wanted to hone in on. Okay so because I wanted to kind of create this with that little kid sweater in mind I was looking for a very specific blue. I remember telling you guys that I finally found the blue. I finally ordered it during the Knitting Lofts anniversary sale and I showed you the mohair at the time which was this one. Which This is the Pascali Manada's in the color 215, which is this really bright blue, which I actually adore. However, 
I couldn't order the main yarn that I was going to hold with this at the same time because they didn't have enough skeins in stock for me to make a sweater. I ended up having to wait and ordered it from a different store. The reason why I wanted to get those two pairings was because when I was at the knitting loft at the beginning of September, I saw the main yarn, which was the Natra, the Deriram Natra's Penelope in the color Mezzanage. And I held it with this mohair and I was like, this is the most perfect match. This is what I'm gonna do for this Arctic Light sweater. So when I finally got the second yarn in, I held them together and they don't match. Guys, I was in a panic because this was a very specific vision in my head and nothing was coming to fruition. People were like, oh, it'll be okay because like you'll have like the lighter mohair to brighten up the darker main strand. And I just, I couldn't get over it that they didn't match. I thought there was something going on with dye lots. No, I was just a dum-dum and ordered the wrong color. I wasn't supposed to order 215. I was supposed to order 214. Look at that pairing. Is that not like a match made in heaven? Like they match so perfectly. Yeah, so long story short, I ended up having to reorder the 214 to hold with this and there was a lot of back and forth in terms of, like internally, not with the store, um, because this was 100% my mistake. I ordered the wrong color. But once I got this brighter 214, I was like, this is actually the color that I want. Like you can, that's the sweater that I'm talking about, the childhood sweater. You can kind of see like they match really nicely together. And this is darker. And I was going for this brighter color originally, but I was like, I can't find a yarn that holds well with this one because everything else seems to be like more muted or darker. And I ended up getting saved by the yarn gods because the Manada was on sale for clearance at the Knitting Loft. So I ended up getting this on like a 40% discount. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna move forward and do the Arctic Lights with this combination, which I'm still obsessed with. I think it looks so good. And I'm gonna save this mohair and use it with something else. I went to my local yarn store and I figured that this would work really well with the drops charisma in the color seven. I think that color is called cerulean. And so maybe eventually I'll do another sweater with this and that drops color. But for now we are working with these two. Okay. So with that all out of the way, I'm sorry that I'm like talking really fast because I'm like really worked up about the story. I feel like I've been living through it for like what feels like weeks and we're finally at the position where we casted it on. And yeah, this is how far I am in. I've already made some modifications to the pattern despite only being like collar and seven rows into the body. And essentially what I've done is I ended up stitching the collar down immediately after making it. I think in her pattern she tells you to knit like the collar length and then to sew it down later on. But I have done the like just stitching as you go for like my Friday tee as well as this sweater. So I was like, I'm just gonna do that now so I don't have to do it later on. Another funny thing about this pattern that actually was why I was really hesitant about casting on way back when I first saw it is that it doesn't have short row shaping. And so that means that in the pattern, the front collar and the back collar are at the same height, which I feel like in retrospect probably would be okay, but also because now that I know about it, I think I would be annoyed. So I tried my best at hacking some short row shaping into the back. I think I mildly succeeded. You can see that the front is like maybe a centimeter or so lower than the back now. I wish I could build in a little bit more. The way that I did it so that the cables would kind of match up once I've like actually started working in the round didn't allow me to do that. I think in retrospect, I would have gone back and figured it out. And while you could say like, oh, you're still very early on, just rip it back and do it now. Guys, it took me five hours to get to this point. <laughs> I've been timing it because I wanted it to, to contrast like how long it takes me to do a cable knit sweater versus like this very plain stockinette. And yeah, five hours in and I am not ripping this back. We're moving forward with this, however it takes its shape now because unless I mess up severely, this is what it's gonna be. But I am obsessed with how it's turning out so far. The fabric that the two yarns make together is so luxurious. I'm so happy with it, despite going through all of the hurdling. I don't know if I mentioned, so this Pascali mohair is mohair, silk, merino, and yak. It's so soft. I know I'm not a good gauge as like 
scratchiness because I'm not very sensitive, but like I can't see this being scratchy. It's so soft. I guess people might be like a little bit more allergic to maybe yak or the wool, but something that I really love about this mohair too is that even though that there's silk in it, you can't see the silk core. Like the color is pretty like consistent across and therefore when you knit it up, you're getting this like really, really deep consistent color that I really adore. For the Penelope, this one is a mohair, sorry, not a mohair. This one is a wool silk blend as well. So this is 90% wool, 10% silk. And them two together is just the squishiest, softest, silkiest combination that I am so thrilled about. So yeah, I am trying to film a process video for this one because it's my first time doing a cable knit sweater. I've already modded it and I suspect maybe I will, actually I think that's probably the end of the big mods because um, I knew I wanted to do the short row shaping early on. But yeah, we'll see how this journey takes me and I will take you guys along for that video. So stay tuned. I suspect given that this is five hours in that the sweater is going to take forever. So I have no idea when that video is going to come out, if it ever does. <laughs> I apologize for teasing about that now. But yeah, I will keep you guys updated here in the podcast about it and hopefully on Instagram. But I'm having a really fun time with it, despite it being such a journey so far. Hopefully it's a little bit more smooth sailing. So far it's still small enough that it fits in my like little, usually this is like my accessory sock pouch, but I'm sure it's going to graduate very soon. Okay, so let's quickly go over future knitting plans and some yarn acquisitions because I still bought some more yarn. I have just fully embraced that I buy yarn. That, that's just how it goes, you know? That's just how the cookie crumbles and that's okay. <laughs> I yeah, that's just how it is. I'm, I'm not even going to justify it. So I do have plans to knit up another stockinette kind of styled sweater in the future. My only thing about it is that I can't cast it on anytime soon soon because it's on the same needle size as the Arctic Light sweater and I don't want to buy more needles. But I did make a swatch for it and this is for the Tendril sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl aka Sophie. And I love that pattern. I saw it when she released it. It's a fairly new release and she made it in this really beautiful Sandus Garn Pure Gint Tutti Fruity and I was, I was done for it. I knew I needed to do it. So I purchased a whole bunch of this yarn when I ordered the correct color of my mohair for the Arctic Lights. And it's just so fun. Look at the confetti. It's, I just, I love it. I am doing a version without mohair because I didn't really want to invest in mohair too. Um, and I hit gauge, so I think it will be okay. But I am so excited. I think the colors are so fun. It's really bright um, without being like in your face highlighter tutti fruity colors. Like there's greens, blues, pinks. It really reminds me of sprinkles. But I've worked with Pure Gimp before, really, really enjoyed it in the past. And so I'm really excited to have another sweater. I think it will be kind of like a similar vibe as this step-by-step -step one with like a little bit more of a rustic feel for it. But yeah, that sweater is glorious. The pattern that she published is one sweater. So it's the tendril. It has like little lightning bolts on the side of the shoulders. But she gives you a lot of like opportunity to modify. She has the option to do a crew neck, a v-neck, split hem the same height, hem. I think she's really great in terms of writing her patterns that way. I haven't knit a pattern from her since my Aorsta summer top back in the summertime. So I'm excited to get this on the needles once I can. I might have to bust out my Knit Picks metal needles. I do have like a whole set of the like standard sizes, but I don't really like working with metal but maybe that's like a middle ground if I'm itching to cast this one on before the Arctic Lights is complete. The last two yarns that I got, one of them came with the same collection of yarns from the Knitting Loft, and that was a couple skeins of the Knitting for Olive Merino in the color Soft Blue. It's this really pretty pastel blue. I picked up five skeins of this. I got in my head making a version of this blue scoop neck tea that I had years and years ago. I don't even know when I got rid of that. It shrunk in the wash because it was like 100% cotton and I got rid of it because it didn't fit. And it 
it's been haunting my mind ever since. Like I loved that shirt. It fits so well. It was like a really nice cut. And I was like, you know what, maybe I'll make a knit version of it because I'm totally a designer. No, I'm not. Um, this is kind of like a plan that I have for future me. And I saw this color when I was ordering it and I was like, you know what, this is like the perfect blue for that shirt. I probably bought way too much. I think I'm not gonna need five skeins. So I'm gonna have to do something else with this yarn. I think maybe also like a scarf or something. But yeah, that's what I got this in mind. I wanna make an everyday scoop neck tea vibe for the future spring summer. I was debating between merino and cotton merino because it would be a summer shirt, but I like the way merino feels a little bit better. So hence why that. I purchased my Penelope from a BC yarn store. And at that time, in order to get free shipping, I threw in a couple skeins of this Drops Baby Merino in this really pretty pale yellow. And that's because I want to knit a little onesie for one of my best friends. She is currently expecting, and I don't know if it's boy or girl, so I felt like yellow was a very neutral color. But yeah, I, I, I threw this in because one, I wanted more yarn, two, I needed free shipping, and four, three, <laughs> um, I wanted to knit something for her because I am so excited for her, and she knows how to knit, so it probably won't be like as incredible, but I don't know, I think like I'm really leaning into the gift knits. I find that like knitting for myself is fun while I enjoy it. I think there's something so special about knitting for other people, especially like other little babies. So yeah, that's all the stuff that I have for you guys. I'm hoping as this rest of the year kind of whittles down, we'll have some opportunity to make quite a bit of progress. I have some time off in December from work and I expect a lot of knitting during that time, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you guys are working on anything special and how your gift knits are going if you're doing that, if you're not totally cool. And I will chat with you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye for now.